All right, this video is an extension of section 9.1 on the Pythagorean theorem for math two. Uh, this section had to do with the Pythagorean theorem, one of the most famous math theorems in uh, mathematics, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, having to do with the relationship with the side lengths in a right triangle. And this video is gonna focus mainly on the proof as to why a squared plus b squared equals c squared and I'm going to focus mainly on President James Garfield's proof for two reasons. Number one, because it uses concepts that we've dealt with recently. Namely, in Chapter 7, we dealt with trapezoids. He uses an ABC right triangle to create a trapezoid. All right, we have an ABC triangle here, copied and pasted here. It's the same exact triangle. It's just copied and pasted, so they're congruent triangles. And he basically creates this trapezoid using some A, B, C, right triangle. And because this is familiar and it deals with some concepts that we've dealt with more recently, that's one of the reasons why I chose it. But the second reason is because James Garfield was a former president of the United States, which is kind of a cool side fact that um, one of our presidents of the United States was into mathematics and did a very famous proof for Pythagoras's original theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So this was in the margins of section 9.1. This is uh, supplemental to why a squared plus b squared equals c squared exists. So this is the video that's going to be illuminating that. All right. So let's start with what James, President James Garfield created. Um, a couple things to point out here. Uh, first off, the reason why we use letters why a b and c uh, why don't we use specific lengths um, let's say for instance i measured this out and i actually did this is a three inch side this is a four inch side that's going to force this one to be a five inch hypotenuse this um, is a famous combination it's known as a pythagorean triple which will be in your section one nine point one notes and you can reference the other video for that information but for right now this is just going to represent some mysterious right triangle and the reason why we don't put in actual lengths is because that's actually a lot weaker. If I only used the fact that this was three inches, four inches, and five inches, that would only apply to a three by four by five right triangle. The reason why letters are important is because it's going to represent that this could literally be any length. This could be a really small side. This one could be really long. Uh, it actually does not matter. And the reason we use letters is because now it can apply to any right triangle. As long as it is a right triangle, then this will apply. All right. And so the reason why James, President James Garfield used this shape as his proof is because there are some definitive rules about a trapezoid that is created. And so just to point this out again, I have some mysterious A, B, C, right triangle. What President Garfield did was he said, it was like, okay, let me take that same triangle and I'm going to rotate it sideways and basically copy and paste a congruent ABC triangle so that I make this perfectly straight line. Um, and just referencing something from another math class, because these two angles are right angles, that's actually going to force this line up here to be parallel to this one down here. And that's important because that by definition will make a trapezoid. If I were to connect these two corners, I now have a trapezoidal figure. And that's, this was important to President Garfield because a trapezoid has very specific rules. Any trapezoid, this one included. And because it is a trapezoid, namely two bases that are parallel to each other and then two legs that are different lengths, um, it's going to have to follow this rule right here. This is the area of any trapezoid. And this is going to be crucial in this proof because any trapezoid has to follow this. Uh, and so just reminding you guys, this is from chapter seven. We went over it briefly. So this is just a little quick refresher, but any trapezoid has to follow this rule. The area of that trapezoid will be one half times base one plus base two. This right here is basically taking the average base length and multiplying by the height of whatever that trapezoid is. So just kind of referencing what that will look like within this trapezoid. These will represent the bases, the two parallel slot, the sides. So base one could be A, for instance, and base two would be B, right? And then the height of this would be the one, the side that involves a right angle, namely this entire side right here. 
And so this entire side will be whatever this value A is plus whatever this value B is. Because so we're going to use that in this rule. But again, because it's a trapezoid, it has to follow this rule. And just giving you a little insight about where this will go, we're ultimately going to solve for the area of this trapezoid in two ways. This is one. And this is the other. This is actually probably the more common way to attack something like this. Seemingly easier, but it's just using a different strategy. Um, another strategy for finding the area of this trapezoid, this does have to be true. This is just a different strategy, is to find the area of each of these individual triangles. We have three triangles that are made within this, uh, this trapezoid. And so if I can find the area of this orange piece and the area of this blue piece and the area of the pink piece right here, and add them all together, I also get the area of the trapezoid. What we're ultimately going to get done is we're going to compare whatever this result is, and this one's going to be a little more complicated. But we're going to compare it to this one, which will be a little bit more basic. And what we're going to do is because these are the area of the same exact trapezoid, they should equal each other. And here's the spoiler alert. Whatever result I get up here has to match whatever's down here, so I can actually use uh, a little bit of algebra just to make a match. And here's the spoiler alert my result is going to be a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's how President Garfield ends up proving Pythagoras' theorem. So let's jump into the more complicated one. So the area of any trapezoid is 1 half times base 1 plus base 2 times the height of that trapezoid. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be filling in those values based on this drawing over here. So base 1 could be either one of the bases. It does not matter. So we'll just choose A. It's going to be one of these two bases, the two that are parallel to each other. doesn't matter which one I pick. Why the hell not? Let's choose A. The other base is just the other base, in this case, B. And again, the reason we use letters is because that means it literally could be any value, whether it's a weird decimal, whole number, does not matter. And then the height, the height of this trapezoid is going to be the side that has this right angle. The height of this is going to be this entire length right here. So A and B combined. The way we combine them is by adding them. So it's going to be multiplied by A plus B. A little smush there. All right. So this is a translation of the rule for any trapezoid. This is a translation for this specific drawing, the one that President Garfield made. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little bit of algebra work. I'm going to move through this a little quickly, um, but this is going to use our same rules that we've covered in previous chapters, namely dealing with distribution and collection of like terms. So what I'm going to do here is I'm first going to distribute the one half into this parentheses. And as a result, I get one half A plus one half B. That's that first distribution right here. And it's still multiplied by this other A plus B. Okay. Now there's a second distribution that can happen here. And again, I understand that this first one will seem complicated. You're going to see where this goes a little bit later in the proof. But for right now, now I'm going to distribute these two polynomials into each other, these two binomials. And this goes back to a topic that we covered previously in this course. Um, but Bear with me. This is good practice. I'm going to take this first object and distribute it throughout the second parentheses. Then I'll move, when I'm done with that guy, then I'll move on to the next object and distribute it through the parentheses. I'm going to end up with a long polynomial here. It's going to look scary, but bear with me. Okay. So first object, 1 half a times a gives me 1 half a squared. All right. 1 half a times b gives me 1 half a a, B. All right. Unlike terms. All right. So now I'm done with that object. Let me move on to the one half B. One half B times A gives me one half B, A, but that's actually the same exact thing as A, B. B, A, A, B doesn't matter the order. So I'm actually going to get the same object here plus one half A, B. So I have like terms that I can combine. I'm actually going to wait until the end of the proof to combine those and you'll see why in a minute. But Finishing off with that object, 1 half b times b gives me 1 half b squared. And yes, I know this is very ugly looking. But this technically right here is the area of this trapezoid. As complex as this looks, you're going to see where this goes in a minute. You may have a very high opinion of President Carfield at this point. But now let's move on to our second area. 
Now, again, this is the same exact trapezoid. Nothing's changed about it. We're just going to do a different strategy, and you're going to see why we do the strategy in a minute. Again, we're splitting this up into the three triangles that make up this trapezoid. The orange one, the blue one, and this pink one. Okay, so the area of this first one right here is a triangle. And hopefully you remember that the area of any triangle is one half base times height. Well, here, the base and the height are just these A and B. And so the area of the orange triangle right here is simply one half base times height. Well, the base is B and the height is A, so I end up with one half AB. That's the area of the orange triangle. And again, like I described at the beginning, this blue triangle is the same exact triangle as this orange one. It's just copied and pasted. It's a congruent triangle. So the area of the blue triangle is also going to be the same thing. One half base times height, but instead of base and height, I have these side lengths A and B. So the area of the blue triangle is also one half AB. Okay. And so again, this is using a different strategy. It's just now using areas of triangles versus the entire collection. All right. And so the last one here is area three, this pink one. Now this is also a right triangle. So this, what we're going to end up with here is I'm going to have one half base times height, but base and height now for this pink triangle are both C. And so if I have C times C, I'm going to get C squared. And so the area of this third triangle is one half C squared. Okay. Each of these represents these different triangles in this trapezoid. Altogether, it has to give me the area of the full trapezoid. In other words, this complicated thing right here has to equal and be the same as whatever this one has to be. We're going to use that fact right now. So let's move down, give ourselves a little bit of space because we're going to use an algebraic concept right now. And this ultimately is how President Garfield showed his proof. So the first result, which again is the area of the whole trapezoid, was one half A squared plus one half AB plus one half AB plus one half B squared. Okay, that was our first result. That has to equal, that again, just to remind you, this green stuff right here is going to represent the area of the full trapezoid. This one is more the adding up the pieces, but it has to equal the same thing. So over here, it has to equal one half AB plus one half AB. Each of these represents those ABC triangles. And then the resulting one, the pink one, the one that was in here, was one half C squared for the area. And we're left with this result. This is a complicated looking polynomial, but this is the area of the whole trapezoid here. This is also the area of the same exact trapezoid. They have to match whatever they are. But here's where we're going to use some algebra. Even though this looks super complicated, we have a lot of one halves, right? The first thing we can actually do is because I have a common one half on both sides, I can actually multiply this entire equation by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of one half? Two over one. So if I multiply the whole thing by two, we're actually going to get rid of every last one of those fractions. So if we do that, we're going to end up with a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared equals, and then the same thing happens on this side, ab, getting a little light on that ink, plus ab, and then plus c squared. And some of you may already see where this is going because now we can collect some like terms. And we notice that these ABs and these ABs are like terms. What I can do is I can cancel out that AB with that AB, basically subtracting AB from both sides. And I can do the same thing with that AB and that AB, creating all these ABs to disappear, resulting in this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And this is how President Garfield showed that based on that trapezoid, this had to be the result right here. And this is why a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Thank you, President Garfield.